I'd like to wish Arcadia University a very happy Earth Day. Can we live in a green world? You know, there's a lot of pessimism out there about what climate change means and how can we possibly address climate change and yet have our lifestyles and, and be able to live in the way that we've become accustomed and what the costs will be and how can we possibly move forward. And the fact is, it's actually a time of great opportunity. There are so many innovations that are occurring now. It reminds us of what, what happens in World War II, when the country had to dig down deep and find solutions, and uh, we did so uh, during the war period and came up with an incredible uh, industrial effort and got people to work and uh, the economy moving. We have a similar challenge now. It's a, one of the most challenging environmental threats to our planet that we've ever experienced. And so when people learn that, there's pessimism about well, what can we do. The fact is there are so many things that we can do now to change the basis of our economy and how we can live and live well. For example, UNEP, the UN Environment Program, uh, just published a study uh, on green jobs that we did last fall and it shows that there are already millions of jobs in the green sector and millions, millions more can be created uh, with the kinds of investments that countries are, are talking about, including the U.S. And it's exciting to see that we can actually go on a different path and have our economy continue to develop while helping reduce the carbon footprint in the world. Yeah, the question of whether we can maintain our current lifestyle is a pretty complex one because it gets into issues also of equity. And the fact is that so many millions of people in the world are still below the poverty line. Uh, bringing people to a, a, above the poverty line and addressing that issue is a core mission of the United Nations. And so when we look at the issue of what's uh, our goal on both climate and poverty, they have to be taken together. And so first, our goal should be looking at the science in terms of the climate change. What do we need to achieve as a world to bring the greenhouse gases that cause climate change into a stable situation? That's number one. The second question is how do we achieve that? And where do the equities lie in terms of what countries take on responsibility? If developed countries such as the United States, uh, which currently has either the most or the second most uh, carbon emissions in the world currently, uh, depending on, on the data that you look at. If the U.S. takes the steps that uh, the Obama administration is now talking about, it is absolutely possible to live a comfortable lifestyle. Uh, there are so many, again, innovations that we can do. There are so many steps we can take that actually save us money. And many countries are ahead of the United States, such as Japan, in terms of energy efficiency. This office where we're sitting now, we're actually hoping to achieve a lead gold standard in terms of the U.S. Uh, Green Building Council's certification program. We worked with a consultant on the materials, the lighting, uh, everything. So we're putting our action where our, our uh, mission is. And that's something that's saving money. And we've actually set an example for the building. They're very excited about it. And we're hoping to influence others in the building and, and in the city uh, when we do our uh, open house, finally, uh, this June. And at home, there are so many changes that people can make small changes that save you money in the home. And so again, there's both self-interest and a benefit to the environment. Something as simple as changing your light bulb to a compact fluorescent light which can save you, you know, many dollars over a year. Many other examples like that that uh, won't affect your lifestyle. Having said that, there are, I think, some very complex issues about what can we do as a globe? Can everyone in the world uh, achieve the level of consumption that uh, some of the Western uh, societies have achieved uh, without creating more 
uh, problems in terms of climate change? Will the climate sustain that? And that, uh, I think, is something that we'll, we'll have to see, what technology can bring and what is the level of uh, standard of living that we can all aspire to achieve and, and maintain a healthy world. As I, I mentioned, there are so many steps that ordinary people can take and we in our office here in, in the UN Environment Program in North America, we're partnering with a number of organizations to actually try to bring that message home. Uh, there's a group called One Change, an organization in Canada, and they've launched an incredible campaign that goes really at a very grassroots level, door to door, in a community, with neighbors talking to neighbors, saying, uh, here's a light bulb, and, and giving them something, and saying, uh, we're giving this to you, and here's what we ask of you, is just to put it in your house somewhere. And it's a way that people are learning, and they learn they save money, and then they get excited about joining the program, and then they say, what more can we do? And that's just one very small change, but there's so much more that can be done just at that level. Now clearly, individuals and what individuals do is not enough. And we need governments around the world to take steps to come to an agreement in Copenhagen, where the climate negotiations are uh, going to be held at the end of this year and to commit to real changes and to real investment changes. Investments at the global level, at the regional and national levels have to flow to transformative investments, to in transformative infrastructure so that we're not doing the same kinds of uh, investments that will lead to climate change uh, and greenhouse gases that brought us here in the first place. The fact is we cannot afford to not take action on climate change. Uh, there are economists who have looked at the uh, cost of climate change and what it would do in terms of the physical cost, cost to our infrastructure, cost to people's lives, uh, the conflicts that could arise if there's uh, scarcity of resources, and all of the costs associated with that. And the conclusion is it will cost more if we don't act. And so it's, it's really critical that we take action and that we act. It's a, the most responsible thing we can do as a society is to take action on climate change.